next the next image we have is just of a modern building with uh, some vehicles parked out in front of it. Oh, okay, okay. No, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, what you think you're seeing is through an atrium, but that's not true at all. This is called Trump Loy. It's trick of the eye. I shot this in uh, Berlin, and the artist has simply painted the wall as though you're looking through it. So uh, there's, there are some very good 3D artists in the graffiti world, but the Trump Loy is an interesting form that uh, often is seen in other murals. So yeah, what you uh, think uh, you're seeing yeah. is simply a, a building that the artist has uh, altered. And by the way, I, I would make this comment. Very often, we, I used to read, uh, graffiti artists vandalized building, destroyed building of $500,000 worth of damage. And uh, my, my sense is, what I always say, is that they aesthetically altered the building. And you may like it or not, but they didn't destroy anything. The building is still there. And so it's just a matter of how you approach and how you think about uh, graffiti. I stopped talking on panels in 1982 about is it vandalism or is it art? Uh, that's a long dead discussion. Maybe it's vandalism, but sure is art, and the world has come to realize uh, how important that art is. Yeah, and to great benefit. I mean, I think the art form itself has endured and expanded as an applied art um and also you you know again for many people it's it's life-saving uh, i hear that and all the time that's why it's so important that you guys gals have opened this museum so that people can really understand the roots and the history and the background of where it all comes from can we get the next picture Yes, this one is epic uh, of the ship. Okay. Of the ship. Okay, there's the atrium. Okay, we're coming to the last picture, which I just love. So, so tell me where this, this is from Berlin, and uh, you literally have to walk. I can't understand how a ship could get in between the building. You literally have to walk up to touch the wall to realize, of course, that it's simply a trompe l'oeil mural. And uh, to me, that is uh, really state of the art. And we have one more slide. It says, it's a beautiful sweeping sunset. Uh, is this, okay. Is this trompe l'oeil? Oh, no, okay. So, as they say in the travel logs, as the sun sets over the Museum of Graffiti in Wynwood, Miami, so ends our discussion, and I thank you all very much for listening. <laughs> James, thank you so much. Well, listen, we have people that are asking questions, and of course, one of them... I hope I have answers. ...that stands out is, uh, will there be a, a, another a book published? No. Publishing a book is very difficult takes a lot of time and energy. Uh, at my age, I passed that. Uh, I did try to do another book in the early 90s, but it never happened. And uh, I went on to do The Walls of Heritage. And uh, also, people might want to look at painting the towns, murals of California. There are uh, painted murals and graffiti murals there. Uh, but three books is enough for one person. So what about your well, By the art way, I want to say it again. Please look at the film, Who is Taki 183. Uh, Taki just does a wonderful job of really talking about the early days, and Black and Nasty add a lot to it. There's a piece of cornbread in there, and I am at the beginning, at the end, kind of trying to put it together. So, yes. question. Uh, well, what I was going to ask you, going back to your archive, what becomes of your legacy? What do you want to happen with <laughs> your archive and your legacy? 
Uh, given okay. that it's so extensive. Okay. I'm about 20, 25 years too late in trying to put it all together. Uh, I'm, I may not succeed in getting it placed. Uh, I'm not looking to give it away. Uh, I've spent literally hundreds of thousands of dollars in travel and what have you, documenting all of this, and I want it to be in a place where people can really see it. Uh, I'm looking at over 100,000 slides. Uh, not all properly. I, I like taking the pictures better than I do doing the archiving. So somewhere somebody maybe comes out of the blue and gives me help, but uh, it's a serious question. Yeah. I'm, I'm not well prepared. Gotcha. Uh, and I've talked, I've talked to Cornell, which okay. has a big uh, graffiti library. I don't think that Smithsonian, I'm uh, uh, detailed enough for them. Uh, I've, I've talked to UC Berkeley, who has 92 million images, mm -hmm. and that went nowhere. Uh, so I'm still looking, still talking, uh, and hopefully, because practically everything I have is gone. Whatever, what I, I put in books is there, uh, but most of my images are, do not exist anymore. What do you mean by that? Well, they're, up, they're not on the walls. A building is put on the wall. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> the, sun, the sun baked it, it cracked. Uh, the average life of an outdoor mural may be anywhere from five, sometimes to 20 years. Uh, but remember, this is going over a period of many more years than that. Tommy DR asks, how did you meet Henry? Interesting. Tony Silver was doing the, mu the uh, film Style Wars, and somebody told him I was good at raising money. <laughs> and I wasn't any help. But Tony came by, we had a very nice time, and he said to me, uh, I got a friend in New York, you really ought to meet him. He's doing the same kind of things you are. And so when I went to New York, uh, I got together with Henry. And then probably a year later, I wrote to Henry, and I said to him, uh, I'd like to kind of track how the graffiti came out of the subways, underground, came up to the walls, and then began to travel across the United States. And I have a nice letter from Henry which says, my brain is graffitied out, but I like your idea, so let's do it. So as soon as we got together, uh, Henry in his great wisdom said, hey, why go across the United States? Let's go around the world. So that's what we did. Genius. Um, I have a question from, well, Mick LaRock, she was asking about your archive, so we answered that. Um, do you believe graffiti culture will thrive and empower the youth disenfranchised neighborhoods similar to the same neighborhoods it was birthed from? I'm not quite, I heard the question. Will graffiti survive? Do you believe graffiti will thrive? Thrive. And empower oh, the youth? Will, as I said to you, it starts in the year minus who knows. And I don't know what the next phases will be, but there will be some kind of art decoration uh, as long as there are people. And particularly, we live in a star culture. And from my point of view, how does a kid in New York City at 178th Street uh, become a star? Well, very few people become stars. So putting your name up on the wall was a way of saying, hey, I'm here, I exist, I'm important, and it's kind of fun. And it was fun. That's what it was in the beginning. And then, of course, it matured and changed and became a real art form. Uh, so something will happen. Uh, what direction it will take? Many directions. And it has already taken, as I've tried to show you here, uh, all kinds of directions. I, I have so a good question for I you. I can't predict what they will be, but uh, we will have some kind of uh, graffiti, art, murals, what have you, uh, as long as people exist. I have a question from Vice One in Boston. He's asking, did you know Jack Stewart? Sure. How did you okay, meet him? Okay, Jack Stewart. Henry and I went to visit Jack. 
And we said to Jack, we hear you're going to do a book. Uh, maybe we should explore getting together and the three of us do the book. So we thought about it and Jack's approach was a very different one than ours. And uh, his photography was very limited, whereas Henry and I produced uh, really quality photographs. So we went our separate ways and Jack never got published. And then he did his PhD thesis and it was published at, I forget the university, and I believe his wife, after he passed away, has produced a book. He is certainly one of the most important people in the early history. But what we were doing, what he was doing, really didn't fit. But yes, I certainly knew Jack. Halo Weird asks, what do you think of Kilroy, Kilroy and old war graffiti? What do I think of? Kilroy and old war graffiti. <laughs> Every show I do has a Gil Kilroy was and I talk about Jack Kilroy. Uh, that was a, an amazing uh, graffiti that spread, of course, around the world. And I tell that story every time I do a graffiti show. I think that was, uh, again, a historic image. And I actually had tunes paint a Kilroy was here in Sacramento and sent it to Henry uh, on one of his birthday events. So it's interesting because, you know, you were mentioning um, uh, your age. And of course, coming out of wartime Europe, uh, Kilroy was a very, very popular uh, nom de plume, as, as so to speak. Uh, it's interesting how people picked it up. But it, uh, again, correlating back to the way you tell this narrative, is quite interesting, right? Because it really doesn't start with the New York City graffiti writers. It's this is something that uh, has, has been around with us for some time. I would guess that the Kilroy was here may be the most replicated image that I can think of, uh, perhaps in a class with images of Che Guevara and Lenin. And w w well, in New York, uh, Prey, remember Prey? Remember all the Prey tags? How prolific Prey was in New York City? Were you familiar with that? Are you asking me, did I know Prey one? No, were you familiar with that, with the Prey, the Prey tag in New York City? Uh, it doesn't strike a note. Yeah. But, it, but, I, but somewhere, I, I, somewhere it's so, slightly familiar, but I can't place it. You have a question. Isn't that something that is that fairly recent? No, no. Prey was everywhere throughout the seventies and eighties in New York City. Okay, it was, it I, was, never, I don't think I have a Prey. It was. It was etched. I guess as I do not. It, it was. It was a tag that was etched everywhere, particularly at phone at phone booths and and in uh, train stations. No. Uh, uh, Doug okay. C. Nineteen seventy one asked Jim, "Did you cover San Francisco graffiti before the New York City subway influence? Did you capture <laughs> gang and punk graffiti?" Well, I did, I, I did a limited amount in the 70s, and uh, my train shots are terrible compared to what Henry did. Uh, so I really began to focus more in the late 70s, early 80s, so I probably missed some of those. Uh, I, I have, for example, a number of early Blades and Comet. I remember Comet and Blade. Uh, and I used to go over to the uh, other side there, of the East River and go into those chop shop factories where they took the cars apart and uh, those were filled with graffiti. So one of the things and I've noticed... Today, that's all Williamsburg and pretty fancy. You know, un unlike, unlike Marty and Henry, um, I don't think I've ever seen any kind of lifestyle photography from you uh, of, of the kids and, um, you know, kids who were part of the city. I, I have some photographs of the artist. For example, uh, I forget where the uh, studio was up at around 178th Street. And I'm just thinking I can see Brim there. I can see Vulcan there. I can see Bio there. Uh, so I have some pictures, but I didn't focus uh, like Henry and certainly Martha, who's got wonderful 
pictures of the whole hip hop scene. Uh, but I have individual photographs. I, I have uh, pictures of Lee, pictures of Futura, uh, all of those people yeah. over the years. And of course, out here, out, out here in California, uh, so many of the writers that I know very well, having lived here from the 80s on. Do you remember meeting me in London in 1986? I, I ran into you and Henry on the street. I do remember that. Yeah, uh, that was a really <laughs> random... That's why I say you are, you are an indelible part of this history and culture. I, that was so random. Was that uh, as you were getting ready to publish Spray Can Art? Yeah, that's why we were there. Yes. Yeah, we had to... Thames and Hudson is in London, and so we, whenever we had a meeting, we had to fly over there. Uh, Interesting. Um, so uh, All Natural 77 asks, why do you think graffiti changes in style when it reaches different cities? Well, because that's the innovative nature of the people who are doing it. Uh, some styles were uh, copied, uh, but as I say, there are so many images and so many styles that I can recognize. It's like a Van Gogh handwriting. Uh, as I told you, the CMP, that nobody looks like him. Uh, Lee, I can usually identify. Uh, and so many of the writers have very distinctive, the Dondies, you, uh, you can always know the Dondies. So, uh, they, so many of the other people, Revolt, uh, you could just go down the line endlessly. Uh, blade, Blade's, uh, I, I, you can't see it behind me, but I've got the Blade swinging uh, musical characters that really look great. So, uh, uh, one last yeah, I think that's the nature, that's the nature of whether the Impressionists, they, there were some that painted similarly, and there were many that painted uh, in their own handwriting, in their own style. Yes. So, um, oh, J James, how can we send that? I'm sending it on Instagram. Okay, <laughs> she's going to send you a picture of my back wall. So, so James, one last question before we go, and it's and it's a good yes. one actually. Sec Fink, uh, for the cover of Spray Can Art, how was that chosen? <laughs> a very good question. Okay, the publisher claims to choose the cover. Their answer is, we know what sells, and uh, that's the cover that is going to be. So I wanted it to be aerosol art, uh, which was a bando piece in uh, Paris. And uh, they came up with, and I'm going to look for the page in spray can art, uh, they came up with a character from Berkeley kind of a squat looking figure uh, where is that if I can find it. anyway uh, it's in the book and I'm not sure were you happy with their choice it's uh, I'm getting close but anyway and I I looked at the picture and I said whoa uh, I, I, if you're going to use that and it's a, it's a little squat figure in Berkeley with a, a spray can. And uh, so I said, the mode character, uh, that's absolutely uh, as classic as they come. Uh, I don't know that anybody's ever painted anything better than that. Uh, with the spray can, it was just a natural winner. His mode was 16 at the time he painted that in London. Yeah. And that became the cover. Is this and I would say, looking back, absolutely the best choice that we could have made. This is fantastic, uh, Jim. I want to thank you for your time. And also, I, just uh, as before we close out, um, Agent Decoy says, I'll say it again. Thank you, Jim, for wowing the judge in my defense and getting me off that conspiracy charge, <laughs> whatever that oh. was. Now, say that again. <laughs> Hold it. Let, 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 my friend here say, what did he just say? Oh, can you say what you uh, just said? Agent, De Agent Decoy says, I'll say it again. Thank you, Jim, for wowing the judge in my defense 
and getting me off that conspiracy charge. Oh my God, I can't repeat all that. <laughs> That's okay. Somebody, he must have helped somebody out out of a tight corner. Um, oh yeah, you helped somebody out of a tight corner. What was the guy's name? Uh, Agent Decoy. Agent Decoy says thank you for getting me out of trouble. Uh, I got a few people out of trouble. The character is a good character. It's on page 51. And, uh, so you guys all great. go to your subway Dane, can. Yeah. P O A. It's a great character of a spray can, yeah. and it would have been. A, it was done by Shadow. Shadow, and it was done in 1986. Okay. Nice piece. Well, Jim, I want to thank you and Anita for being such a great and uh, a patient. Uh, well, you're more guest. than welcome. You, you did a great job. And uh, uh, it wasn't so easy to go through it, but we managed. And hopefully, uh, if people have questions, they can send them to you or they can forward them directly to me. I am Jay Prigoff, 12 at Comcast.net. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to share. Uh, and I thank all the artists for what they've created because uh, it's kept me busy for a lot of years and out of trouble. Yes, James. I want to thank you again uh, for all your commitment and all your archiving and support of all of your young artists. And of course, you know, for leaving an archive, uh, a testimonial of, of, of people and faces that no one will ever uh, know personally, but at least they'll know their work, their name, their, their art, um, because you were there to photograph it and to... Um, document it for us. Uh, and again, for Spray Can Art, a book that's changed so many lives uh, and continues to change lives. Um, I, I really want to thank you and personally for all the memories I've shared with you and for your support of the museum. You were a trooper. You were here with us uh, during the opening um, and uh, you celebrated us, but really we were celebrating you and your presence there and we were very thrilled to have you join us. You're very kind. I appreciate that very much. And uh, hopefully we'll have many future opportunities to share and to learn and to look back at the history, which you're doing so well. Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Folks, a uh, big round of applause to Jim Prigoff. And um, I also uh, want to thank you all for being patient uh, in dealing with some of the technical issues. We have a huge storm passing us here in Miami. I don't know if that was affecting it, but I, uh, again, to celebrate Jim and, and to understand uh, his history and his, uh, I guess, perspective on mural art and graffiti art and the importance of our contribution to that conversation. Uh, it's wonderful to hear uh, and uh, a photographer who's been around for so long and has documented so much uh, to get some of his wisdom. So tomorrow we're going to have Jose Parla joining us. That should be a fantastic talk. Uh, he's a, just a wonderful human being, a very talented artist, and uh, he has so much to share with us. So again, folks, uh, I want to remind you tomorrow at 7 p.m., uh, join us uh, here at Museum of Graffiti, uh, Art Talks Live. Um, and again, another reminder to check out Cash 4's virtual art show. Uh, just go to museumofgraffiti.com and follow the links to, to see it. It's a super cool show. Um, that said, everyone, I'm going to sign out. And uh, I want to thank you all again. Have a good night.